we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to be dealing with chapter 17 starting out. As you can see, um, E is filming me class, and this is going to be an interesting class, and then some. We don't have the time. And so we are going to, most of this will be on your final exam, just to let you know. And you wonder why Katie is sitting up in the front, is because she's going to be handling the computer and all that stuff. Now, there's a reason why I got this ABC on there, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, you said I can move around, you will see me with no problem, and all that stuff. And we got the tables, okay, and we have the three, well, these four tables here are the people that are always going to have something to say. And Muhammad will probably have something to say, but these guys over here are just going to stay silent. So we're going to just roll from there. <laughs> We're going to see. <laughs> Nothing. You'll figure it out. OK. All right. Let's get this party started, superstars. And we welcome, we want to welcome um, Brother Colton. Raise your hand, Brother Colton. All right. All right. OK. We're going to deal with um, the assortment of gender. And I like talking about this. And then some, uh, take your comments and all this other good stuff in a few minutes. So you're talking about agenda, new term, describe a particular type of gender, nonconformity, which is we have a lot of people that are nonconformists in this room. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. OK? We got bi-gender, two, two separate genders, either man or woman. The key ingredient is switching. OK? Hold your comments. Well, I have a question. I have an answer. OK. Um, so with the bi-gender, is that supposed to be the same thing as intersex, or are we just talking about gender identity? Just talking about gender identity. Right. Thank you very much. OK. <clears throat> and then we talk about gender fluid. Experiences people endure with gender is determined based on the location, place, or it can be depending or the situation, situation. OK. Anybody want to give us an example of gender fluid? Go ahead, Hammer. <laughs> Wait a minute. I said, I said gender fluid. Not swapping fluids. We'll get to the swapping fluids. OK. OK. Gender fluid, not swapping fluids. We'll deal with swapping fluids in a few minutes. Katie? It's like drag queens considered gender fluid? Drag queens. OK. Tay? You want to give us an example, Tay? Sure. Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose? OK. Next slide, Kate. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, Yeah, gender fluid. Put that TQ next to gender fluid. OK. So we got transgender. And this question always comes up. There's always a debate about this. Individual whose gender roles is opposite of that opposite of those that society um, expects based on their anatomy. And then the fastest growing community, um, fastest growing community in the country. They're also the fastest growing community that are murdered. And then this whole debate about gender, transgender athletes. And this adds to the debate, transgender people in the military. Should they serve? OK, and that question always comes up. This huge debate about it. It's not just a debate in the Confederacy. It's a debate all over the country. We're talking about transgender athletes, transgender people in the military. What happens when you have a transgender person that comes to church? What happens? 
What, do you, what is the congregation going to say? Guess, Brother Blake. Uh, they just keep talking amongst themselves, like they're trying to shut them out, like they don't belong because they're yeah. not of the norm. I thought that um, the church welcomes everybody. Are you saying, Brother Blake, that there's discrimination within the walls of the church? That's what you're saying. What'd you say? Yeah. They don't want any gay people in the church because they're gay. So, yeah, transgender, that's a whole nother ball game. If you didn't get this, don't worry about it. Come on to the next slide, please. Now, this is where it gets real interesting. And I'm going to explain because this is not in your, in your textbook. Okay. Which one should we deal with first? You got a smile on your face. <laughs> should we deal with the flim flam or the immaculate conception? Flim -flam. The flim flam. Okay. <laughs> the flim flam. You, don't th you think you know. You have a feeling. So, Miss Tish, since you have a feeling, you want to share with us what your feeling is? Okay, no, no. That's, no. Is that what it is? The flim flam theory? But, 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 I'm getting all these answers. Hold on, guys. I'm getting all these answers. I want to make sure. A, B, C. Okay. Once your sperm leaves your body hammer, you have no rights to it. None. Wait a minute. You have no rights. It's not yours anymore. You don't own it. It could belong to anybody. So that means that when it leaves your body and it ends up in somebody else's body, it's theirs. And they can do what they wish with it. Yes. Hold on. Katie has something to say. Go ahead, Katie. It's not yours. It's not yours anymore. It's not yours. But the baby's yours. But it is. Yeah. You don't control it. That means in so many words, keep your sperm to yourself. <laughs> keep your sperm. Hold on. Wait a minute, Margie. Wait a minute. For you fellas in here that think y'all players playing. Player. You're getting played. <laughs> and I want you to think about it, especially if you've got young boys and sons and all that stuff. Tell them. Your sperm leaves your body. It's all over. It's done. It might end up somewhere where you don't want it. <laughs> yes, Margie? No, I was just going to say they have no control over it because uh, they can make a, I mean, a woman can decide to have an abortion if she so chooses, but a man cannot force her to have one. Okay. So ultimately, the woman decides what to do with it after her body. Okay, which we're going to lead to immaculate conception. We're going to leave it to immaculate conception. Hold on. Now, immaculate conception. I can't explain this if you talk. There you go. Because you sit back here, and it comes on the um, final exam and say, I don't remember. I forget. You won't forget this. OK. This is um, JB. This is Heather. And this is her friend, Sarah. I'm, no, let me finish. <laughs> JB has sex with Heather. But JB don't know Sarah. But they're friends. Yes, bruh. Yes, bruh. Yes, bruh. Yes. See, it's starting to think now. 
Yes. I don't know, but we having a movie right now. So let's work with me. This is JB. Okay, this is JB. And this is Heather. Heather has sex with JB. And that's Sarah over there. JB don't know Sarah. But who is up pregnant? Sarah. Sarah. What? Yeah. Now I got your attention. I can't answer everybody's question. Hold on. Katie, Katie. Hold on. Guys, Shannon, I want to know why David has his head in his hands. That didn't happen to you, did it? No. <laughs> I, I heard turkey yeah, I, I was I, I was trying to get everybody's attention. Now Katie's right. That's that's one form that this duo, because it's a duo. That's why we call it the Immaculate Conception. You got Heather, and you got Sarah, and JB don't know. So since JB don't know Sarah even though he had sex with Heather, and they know they scheme together, and they use one form, the turkey baster. That's why as this goes back to this one here. Once this fluid hammer yeah. leaves your body, yeah. it's not yours. Well, yeah, someone steals it. They didn't steal it? <laughs> no, they didn't, Blake. How did they steal it? How did they steal it? Yo, I didn't give it to see. Yeah, Wait a minute. Hold on. She didn't, hold on, hold on. She did not, she didn't steal it. Once it left his body, JB's body, that's A, that's JB. It went to, it went to B, that's, that's Heather. And JB don't know Sarah, but Heather and Sarah are working as a team. It's a duo. Hold on, Margie, I got this. They working as a team. And this results in court cases such as um, a cake in the oven for nine months. Chain down. <laughs> cake in the oven for nine months. And then it pops out, and Sarah takes JB to court. And so when JB goes to court, he gets papers first served to him. What is this? I don't, I don't even know this woman. Then he show up. I don't know who that is. And Heather's in the courtroom sitting in the back, smiling. Oh because they just got over on JB. Now usually JB is an entertainer, athlete. Okay, Marge, you have something? Oh, I was just gonna say, once he gave it to Heather, it was free for her to, free for her to do whatever she chose, I guess. All right, yeah, basically. And that was yours, you would get, you could do whatever you want, it was that gift, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ms. Ms. McCaskey. Well, one, one form is a turkey baster. That's one form. Other forms, people use diaphragms. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Hammer. Uh, yes, it can be. There are many ways, but you have to have the um, semen inserted. And that's the easiest form. Folks, this happens more than we realize, okay? It happens more than we realize, and we have to take it seriously. And I just hope that none of you guys ever experienced this, because there's plenty of people, especially that play in professional sports, they go through this all the time. All the time. So you got a tandem working together, and thus, Children or twins are produced from it. Thus, don't fuck. Thus if you don't, <laughs> if if you don't, you don't have to worry about it. If 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 you don't slip your penis in a vagina. Period. Okay. 
We have any questions? <laughs> Ms. McCaskey, you still confused? No. Okay, who said shady? What? Okay. Why is it shady? Why are women shady? No, no, I didn't say women. I said, why is it shady? That whole situation? It happens on a regular basis. Because of exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. If, if Go I'm ahead, Blake. sex with woman A, okay, we'll, okay. we'll give her Okay, okay, no, no, okay, no. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, okay. Blake, since you put yourself, okay, this is Blake. Okay, this is Blake, all right? And then we have, what's the young lady's name? We'll go with Emily. Heather. Emily. 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 Don't say that. That's her name. Oh. Okay. You was a no. You was All right, Jane Doe. JD. And then Jane Doe got a friend. Janine Doe. Janine Doe. <laughs> All right. And so. <laughs> All right. You guys are having a field day with this one. So she's having sex with. You having sex with. Jane. Jane. Yeah. And you don't know Janine. No. Right. Shady. If she ends up pregnant. Shady. And then I see her in court nine, ten months later. Which you will see. Well, first of all, that's there's a process, Blake. That's rape because I didn't give consent. No. <laughs> they ain't going to see it that way in the court of law. Well, if they see it that way, it's the other way. Well, you, you, yeah. you say, well, first of all, there's a process. And the process is, yeah, no, but there's a process. And what the process is, you have sex with her. Then she um, is in cahoots with her friend. And then what happens is they serve you paternity test papers. Mercy, what? Say what? Mercy, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, they send you those papers first. And then you deny it. Then what happens is when you take the test and it comes up positive, 99.9%, .9 it's your baby. But you keep telling people, that you never met this woman, you didn't have sex with her. That's true. But you don't know there's another party involved in this. And that's why it's the immaculate conception. Now, I was aware, that, became aware of this process about 20 years ago. And I remember <coughs> the, this talk show host saying that he got a call offline from a woman, why are you telling our business? And she was one of those individuals who had taken a professional athlete to court and got paid because she was in cahoots with her. So I said, wow, this is interesting. I said, I got to put, put, put this in part of the lecture. But I never had the opportunity to do it until this class came available for me to teach. So it's a, it's a hell of a process. Is it shady? Life's not fair. So what do you do to combat this? You tell those young men who are out there thinking they playing and they getting played. You gonna get played. You need to watch these people. Hold on. Wait. 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 Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You want to explain yourself, Tish? He's in the moment, Tish. You gonna put how a, <laughs> Tish? How are you gonna protect him? <laughs> okay, Ho hold on, Tay, because um, Talia had her hand up. Go ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, like, my mother's like playing like for college. They like teach them to like, if you're gonna, you know, be out here that way, take your condom with you wherever you like. Take your condom like when you're done, like take Flush. it. Make sure that you're like doing like an activity, but also make sure that you're like being proactive. I was gonna say the same thing. Yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Flush the flush the yeah. condom down the toilet. <laughs> Well, 
What you gonna put it in your pocket? <laughs> Next slide. Okay. Can I move on? Go ahead, Margie. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. She said, like, bake their sperm, bake their sperm, freeze it until they get married, and in the meantime, have a vasectomy and do all they want. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, Hammer. Wait a minute. Miss Clark. Oh. Damn. Katie. Katie. Really? Go ahead. Miss Ms. Clark. Hold on, guys. Miss Clark. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. This, this, okay, guys, this is a um, subject that comes up quite a bit. Feminism. In chapter 22, dealing with feminism, we're going to stay with this. So we, let me, let's go back. Everybody has the last, um, the last slide, you guys understand that because you're going to see it on your final exam. Okay. We talk about well, my experience with feminism is, and when you hear somebody say, I'm a feminist, I'm a feminist, I'm a feminist, you're a feminist, I'm a feminist, you hear feminist. And the negative things that come out about people who consider themselves feminists or people who consider people feminists. And then you heard our, our best friend, the good reverend. Yes. And they got this term called feminazis. Okay, feminism. Yes, Muhammad. No, I'm not going to say that. You're going to sit this one out, huh? Yeah. Uh huh, okay. Okay, all right. Okay. So we got feminism. Very negative word to most people. If you consider the feminist, most people um, think that you hate men. Okay, you hate men. Yes, Mr. McGowan. Well, some people have um, valid criticisms. I mean, what, are, what is one valid criticism like, in regards to feminism? Well, I mean, one thing is that they're very hypocritical in that they complain about harassment. But I've seen lots of feminists send death threats and harass people and dox people. Mm -hmm. You talking about the feminists? Yeah. Okay. And then they complain that they're getting harassed. It's like, well, and don't harass other people, period. There are some people who are, are considered, excuse me? They're not real feminists, because we, we, we deal with that in a few minutes. Um, do they make, you can make an argument, Alex, that People like that make people who are considered feminists look bad. Yeah. Same yeah. Same way with terrorism. Yeah. Like yeah. One of my sheroes, in fact, I will be lecturing her about her next week, is um, Dr. Angela Davis, who is a feminist. And she's a very, very, um, um, very proud person to be a feminist. Proud to be a feminist. Yes, Katie. Yeah, see, see, it's all about equal opportunity for everybody, for both men and women. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. 
period. You've heard me say this. You've heard me say this. Marge, you've heard me say this. Three things that I hate is racism, sexism, and discrimination. And if you are for the rights of women, be for the rights of all women. If you're for the rights of men, be for the rights of all men. For you for the rights of human beings, be for the rights of all human beings. Don't segregate. Don't separate. It's not one or the other. Yes, David. Mm -hmm. Just say. Although you might say that, uh, although it may be that majority of feminists are good people who are fighting for equality overall, mm -hmm. unfortunately, I don't think that's what the media no. latches on to. No, that's true. You're and correct. I don't think that's the portrayal that they get. What do I always say, David, about the media and you guys? I don't We're listen smarter to than the people. Thank you, Hammer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Thank you. You're smarter than the people on television. I'm going to keep saying it till, till it sinks in, till you get it, until you start acting like it. You're smarter than the people on television. If I want to have a quality conversation, I'm going to talk to you guys. Y'all smarter than them. They show how stupid they are every day. You think they can sit in this class? I don't think so. And to match, match wits with you guys? No. Yes, Hammer? Uh, what I was going to say is, is I fully believe that, but like, how do we achieve it? What's that? Uh, for equal work, because it's not. You got to hammer. It requires a lot of work. Yeah. Okay? It requires a lot of work. We, we're dealing in times where people don't believe in facts, these five letter words facts, truth, think, logic. Okay? That's my favorite one. We're in a fact free, no logic society. But this room, we deal with the facts. We can theory about everything. We can, but make sure you have the facts. That's the most important thing. And th with this here, feminism, oh yeah. See, I was told I couldn't teach a class like this. I was told I couldn't talk about issues dealing with women, because I'm a man. Last I checked, I got a wife. My, my family's dominated by women. I think I came from a, a woman. I believe so. I guess. And she came from a woman, too. So since um, they used to tell me, you got a hard head, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to talk about it. Now, we got these individuals up here, misogynists, hatred of women, an oppressor. You got men out here that do not like women, period. They're in front of you every day. Trump. Trump and his ilk. And people always say, well, how is, um, I can't understand why he's doing so well in the polls. Have you noticed that Hillary Clinton can't go above 50%? They say, well, you know, Hillary got issues. We got that. She got issues. She really, she really does have issues. We know this. We can go through a litany of them. But one of the main things is, because she's a woman, and don't let nobody tell you any of that. Nobody. She's a woman, period. Why don't you just go ahead and say she's a woman? I ain't voting for her. Trump can say anything he want. He can do anything he want. Now, if I'm wrong, you tell me. Come on, tell me. I can take it. Come on. I'll take all y'all along. He can do anything he wants because he knows what's on the other side. See, we haven't gotten knee deep into this here on what happened with those tapes. Another woman came out about three hours ago since I've been here in school. His supporters still support him. Yeah, it just came out just, yeah. See? He can do what he want. Now, we know Hillary got issues. She does. We know that. One of my students said two years ago, Professor Golden, this country is ready for a woman to be president, but not that woman. Okay? I get that. I get that. But we have people who hate women because you're a woman. Bottom line. And if you don't believe it, listen to them.
Listen to the language when they, you start bringing up issues or, or, or topics or things that, are, or, or, that might deal with women's issues that involve women, the language to describe. Yes, Alex. You say, you say what? You talking about Michelle? I'm going to tell you this right now. But you want me to answer the question? I'm going to answer it. Okay. Wait a minute. You got to understand something. First of all, it wouldn't have happened. Because, see, they had to talk to Michelle about her husband running. Because when people start talking about her husband, she was about to go Chicago on people. <laughs> and they had to have a long talk with her. They said, you, you know, Michelle, you can't say the things you're saying. You can't do the things you're doing. It took a lot. And she told Barack, she said, look, if you don't win, we ain't doing this no more. See, that's part of the story to nobody. No, no, no. No, but if it would, if, if, hypothetically, <laughs> they were losing their mind now. Just, I, want you, I want you to think about this. Hold on to lay away. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about November 9th. That's a Wednesday. Margie, let me hear this. November 9th. November 9th, either Trump, President Trump. Hold on. The same, like, the same. Thing you said, and Miss Robinson put her hand on her head. President Hillary Clinton elect. Hold on. Yeah, that's right. It's just like this here. So you're going to have one side that's going to be upset, and you had the other side that's going to be upset. So what y'all going to do? What you going to do? Okay. Hold on. The young lady from Wisconsin had her hand up. Say your thing. Um, you, okay, so like, you know how like, you ask a question about Trump and say, like, uh, Hillary, like, a, like a woman, or like a, like a, what? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would it be, yeah, would it be, if she wasn't a woman, would you even be, like, thinking about her as, like, pro-women and, like, she has nope. to be, like, a feminist? Like, this, like, this wouldn't even be, like, the discussion that we'd be having right now. We wouldn't even have this, well, see, I would have this discussion me, but the media wouldn't have this discussion yeah. because we can't put too much stock into those guys because they have a certain editorial perspective. The question you should ask yourself for the individuals that are running for president is what you didn't hear. Did you hear anything yesterday about families? Did you hear anything yesterday about you guys are student, student debt? Did you hear anything yesterday about infrastructure? Did you hear anything um, yesterday about um, the injustice criminal system, criminal justice system. Those are problems. Did you hear anything about global warming? No. Those things impact all of us. Yeah. That's the question we should ask. And if she is supposed to be concerned about families because she's a grandmother, she's a mom, then she, she's a mom. She's a, Darren, she's a mom. OK? She has a daughter. That means she's a mom. Then we should understand she should talk about what is her agenda for families. There you go. Well, she talked about, um, Hold on. Who's talking? I did. Go ahead, Shannon. I thought he didn't know those ladies. That's what he said. All I'm saying is what I know. <laughs> no, Mr. Pottier. <laughs> All I'm saying is she wasn't talking about like her issues. She was talking about her sound issues. She was talking about, she was like, while Trump was doing this, I was helping families. Okay. So I'm better than him. Okay. He's okay. Since we go in there, Shannon. Let's deal with this. We have misogynists. Can, do, you know, do you understand the language of a sexist? Do you understand the language of a sexist? Anything benefiting women, women's issues, total resentment. 
period. Total resentment. That sounds like some of the men in my family. I know they're going to watch this tape. I don't really care. <laughs> OK, that really does. The, the, the mindset of a chauvinist, a sexist, women are not supposed to do what? They, first of all, they ain't supposed to lead. They're not supposed to work. What else are they not supposed to do? Raise their kids by, raise their kids what? By themselves. Think, wait, whoa, Alex said, what'd you say? Say that louder. Think. You got that on tape. Think. Because it's unacceptable to think. It really is. It's unacceptable to think. They're not supposed to think. They're not supposed to work by themselves. They're not supposed to lead. They're not supposed to do what else? What are women not supposed to do according to it? I'm a sexist. They're not supposed to be equal in any way. They're supposed to what? Not supposed to be equal in any way. Such as, Blake, give, specify. Right to vote. Right to vote. Women, the good reverend. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What did you say? Women are not supposed to have an opinion. That means, E, you can't have an opinion. Chelsea, you cannot have an opinion. No, you cannot. That means that you fellas in here, your mother's not supposed to have an opinion. Yeah, I'm going to just make it personal. How many of you fellas in here got sisters? Raise your hand. You fellas in here that got sisters, Y'all not, y'all sister's not supposed to have an opinion. Oh, the daughters, thank you, Tish. Your daughters definitely don't have an opinion. And if you are a daughter, you definitely cannot question your father. Okay? You can't question, you, you have no say, no rights. You ain't supposed to vote, you're not supposed to think, you're not supposed to use facts. You're a woman, period. Shannon, you really are not supposed to have nothing to say. Even when you come to class, you're not supposed to have nothing to say. You're not even supposed to have a thought. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that. Somebody asked the question, why is Shannon here? <laughs> no, no, you know we're going to deal with it. Believe it. What's the word, Alex? What's the word? Somebody asked the question, why is Shannon here? Shannon is here. Don't. She can't use logic. She's not allowed to think. How's she going to use logic? You can't use logic when you're dealing with a sexist. They don't operate in logic. You're not supposed to think. You're not supposed to use facts. No. You're not supposed to even know the word manipulate. You cannot use facts, logic, think. You're a woman. You cannot. So we have... Um, Ladies in here who are interpreters, they're not supposed to be here because they're women. Yeah, it's that personal. It gets personal. But see, this is the mindset of a sexist. How do you know a sexist when you see one? Can you tell a sexist when you see one? Can you look at a person, Daniel, and say, that's a sexist? Can you, Margie? Can you tell? Do they wear Brooks Brothers suits? Do they, have, do, they, do they have their nails manicured? Do they wear sandals? Do they wear a hat like Hammer? Or a hat like Brother Khaled? Or, or, or Ahmed? Oh, Blake gonna tell us the sexist. <laughs> Go ahead, Blake. I don't think it's by anything they wear or a certain way they carry themselves. I think as soon as they open their mouths and you see how uneducated they are, then- Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Wait a minute, Blake. Now, that's a very, very powerful statement that Blake just made. He said how educated they are. So you're saying that if they got a PhD, they can't be a sexist. Hold on, Tay. No. In real life, 101? No. If they got a, wait a minute, you said if they got a PhD, they, can't be, they, can, they can be a sexist or it can't be? They can be. They can be. They still can. Because there are a lot of people with PhDs that are sexist and racist. There's a lot of people with PhDs that don't deserve their PhDs, too. 
I'm not going there with you today, even though you want me to. Even though you, the mind is always one, Margie. Well, excuse me, so ho- their personality overrides their education. Personality overrides education. Tay? I just want to point out that not only men are sexist, but women too. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, they are. Said to me the other day, the problem with women voting or something like that, and I immediately like, like blocked it out. I don't know what he said after that, but mm-hmm. like, Okay, you know what they would say about a woman that is sexist? They won't call her sexist. What would they call her? Uh, Loyal. Uh, yeah. Loyal. <laughs> I was looking for a word, not a phrase. What would they, what, what would they call her? <laughs> Tish? <laughs> you don't think that they would call her a feminist? You sure? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying, you don't think that they would call her a feminist? Yeah. They would call her a feminist. All that stuff you said, all those phrases you said, you're correct. But they would call her a feminist. They can. They, and I'm not saying, don't put logic to what I'm saying. Because we're dealing with a sexist. See, sexist and racist, and understanding the language of those people, and understanding them, they don't operate in the real world. They don't operate logically. It's difficult sometimes to understand them, but you have to, and you have to come to a conclusion that they do not operate in the real world and they don't treat people humanely. It's not in their DNA. Okay. Now, we got labeling theory, and what is the impact? When somebody gives you a label, what's a label that you cannot erase? Even time is the great confirmer. It confirms everything. Everything about every situation, every theory, every person. Time confirms everything. But what is something that's li- when you attach a label, you can't get rid of it even with time. It even, it even Trump, excuse my pun intended, time. Yeah. Racist. Racist. Yeah. S- wh- what? Who said that? <laughs> Katie, you're supposed to be hammering the mic. What'd you say, slut? So you're saying that when somebody's labeled a slut, they can't get rid of it over time? They can, but that's the label that gets like, put down in politics. So when somebody said, that's, that's Jane Doe, I'm using Blake's term. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get rid of it even if it's 20 years, even if it's 30 years? Personally, they can. Well, it's a label. Okay. Well, I can get rid of B, I just can't get rid of C. <laughs> okay. What about crazy? That's a label you can't get rid of. Okay, crazy. What's another label a person can't get rid of? Wait, wait a minute. Pedophile? That's what I said, sex offender. Okay. Pedophile? What'd you say, Muhammad? Terrorist. Terrorist. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's a great one. Yeah. Muhammad said terrorists. Oh, I Hammer agrees with you. Okay, so terrorists. Somebody say blonde. He did. Who said that? Potter. Potter. Wait, wait, we got to explain this, Mr. Potter. Um, blonde. How? <laughs> okay. That's okay. Ginger is just excess blonde. It's probably. <laughs> okay. Let's look at the bottom. When individuals are la- um, labeled as misogynist, hatred of women, the path to reconciliation, there's no reconciliation in so many words. Once you're labeled this, just like you said, once you're labeled, you can't get rid of these labels. Because one label that you guys didn't mention is what if somebody murders somebody? Killer. Killer? They say call him a murderer. The first thing they say is murderer. It depends. It depends on the situation. Somebody said pedophile earlier. Okay, Shannon. Um, pedophile, Blake. 
Okay. All right. So, okay, so pedophile. We yeah. We we want we want some action. We want to deal with that person. Okay. Katie, next slide. If we try to solve this problem, we must engage them, not label them. Further name calling doesn't help the situation. When is name calling positive? It's not. We want to basically try to engage the individuals if we can, if possible. Now, you don't have to put this in your notes because me and my cousin went round and round. We're going to deal with it, all right? According to my cousin Avery, who's 21, it's okay to catcall the women. I want to show hands of the ladies. So, fellas, sit this out. I want, to show, I want the fellas to sit this out. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to wait just to sit down because I wanted a piece. Okay. Fellas, fella, sit this one out. Okay. The women in this classroom, and that includes you, E. Okay. Can you tell, raise your hand as if you've been catcalled within the last 24 hours. Catcalled within the last 24 hours. It doesn't matter. Okay, within the last 24 hours, within the last two days, within the last week. Okay, now, are we talking about these cat calls were unwarranted? You didn't solicit them, right? Margie, what cat call? Just to go outside to smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> We have to think about this. It's okay to catcall women. <laughs> and is this a true statement? Are you sure? Yeah. Now, she doesn't believe this, but in the mindset of we're talking about macro society, no woman should be offended when a man gives them attention. Yeah. See this? See that right there? Okay, now I'm going back over. See that right there? Okay. No women, no woman should be offended when a man gives them attention. Okay, you know why? No, because I'm gonna say, we're men. Okay, we're men. We're men. Miss McCray, that's what we, and the word, Blake is not here. That's what men do. Go ahead, Kendall. I was just going to ask, because there's no logic to this situation, regardless of a woman's sexuality, their preference, if a man on the street cat calls her, says anything remotely sexual towards her, we're just supposed to fawn over and just, man, I love this attention. That's right. All the guys love me. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ms. Clark, that's why my cousin made that statement that um, women are here on this surf to please men. And the mind, hold on. <laughs> this is in the mindset of most guys. What, what, what did Derrick Rose say? We just men. That's what, and I said, he, he didn't say that. But a lot of guys feel that way. Or they would say, this is what men do. Ms. Wilson? Never mind. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so she feels in the mindset of a lot of people, women, women were placed on this earth to please a man. Your cousin said that? She doesn't believe that. She was saying about macro society. Okay. And I always get that question that, does she actually believe that? No, she doesn't feel that this is right, but in the mindset of a lot of people. And if we go back to the previous slide with misogynists and sexists, they feel this way. You got a father that's going to tell this is who and who, and you guys seen this in the documentary. Hold on, Ms. Clark. You seen this in this documentary that I showed with JoJo and Mina. This is who you're going to marry. 
You have no say. Why? Because you are my child. You are my daughter. I determine who you marry. End of discussion. That goes back to what I said earlier. Women have no say because you're a woman. Professor Golden don't believe that because you know I don't believe it because I let you say what you feel. But in, I'm going back into the mindset of a sexist. Say your thing, Ms. Clark. Wait, wait a minute. I got a response to that. We are the donators of the sperm. So you could procreate. Technically, we don't need sperm. Women's yeah. eggs. Yeah. No. Women's yeah. eggs can be modified into sperm. Genetically, now, not in the past. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. Go, go ahead, Shannon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but see, this goes back to what my cousin was saying, this whole thing about pleasing, pleasing men. You're here supposed to, and you see it throughout society. Okay, Ms. Talaya, go ahead. Go ahead. It's cool. That okay. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hey, women do it to guys too. Yes, they do. I've I've seen it firsthand, not with me, but a friend of mine, where he was coming to visit me. I've seen it firsthand, not with me, but a friend of mine, where he was coming to visit me. No, it wasn't. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. No. No, it was not me. No, it was not me. But he ran in the house. I said, man, what's wrong with you? He said, man, them girls over there hollering at me. See, he would he hollered at him, he said, if he wasn't um, dating his future wife. You know, so, but they were, yeah. But he ran in the house. He had on shorts, and they thought he was good looking. And he's a good looking man, you know. So I'm not saying that because he's a friend of mine, but I'm just saying. That. I th- no, I did. Oh, I didn't tell you the other part of the story. I, I did go out and tell them, why are y'all harassing my friend? They say, look, your friend is fine. <laughs> yeah, your friend is fine. So it does, it does happen to guys too. Did you tell them he was taken? Yes, I did. They didn't care. Normally, ho- hold on, I, I got Dave, then, then. go ahead. Dave. I'd like to point out that as soon as he said what the woman said about his friend, about, oh, he's fine, and all of a sudden everyone starts laughing. But if that was his sister, would everyone have laughed about that? I'll, pu- I'll answer that question. I would get on my sister's case. Because I would, I, when guys, were, my teammates would come around, I um, made sure that none of my women in my family were around. No, I couldn't deal with that because some guys are teammates and they friend, uh, their teammate is dating somebody in their family. I, I was thinking about that. Could that ever happen? No, no, no. Hell no. Go ahead, Daniel. My friend? Yeah, and like, because I was like really ripped last summer. Oh. And like, I, I like, you were buffed. Yeah. Like, I still 
still have it since I've, you know, I put on a couple of weight. I'm like trying to slim down for summer, but <laughs> um, like I was kind of embarrassed when it happened because like the girl honked at me like while I was running outside without a shirt and like waved. <laughs> she was she was checking you out. I guess. <laughs> she was looking at you. She was eye to eye with you. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Go ahead, Darian. Like me and my friends, like my friends are all Say say that say that because I don't think they missed that. When does it when does it get creepy and weird? Like, if you start stalking them, okay. like, like that, you know, if you're gonna say something it like that, it happens a lot sooner than that. <laughs> I don't know. So it becomes a bit insexual. It becomes creepy when it's when they say when they show it's unwanted, then you keep it. How do you know it's unwanted? If we go back to Talia's example, if if a, if 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 a person is attractive, say for example. They, they, they're stalking um, Brother Collard. This is Brother Collard right here. Don't say nothing. You got a woman that's stalking you. She fine. I mean, she's a dime piece. No, Alex, no. No. She ten, she's, no, she's not 10 crazy. She's stalking, She, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. She fine. She's fine. She's a dime piece. She's a dime piece. Okay. Go ahead. Let's see what he's going to put right on. Okay. It's 10. You're fine, right? He's You're fine. Right? You're fine. But wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, wait around. Hold on, wait around. You're crazy. This is crazy right here. You're crazy right here. But she's fine. But she's fine. No, no, no. She fine. No, you got to put fine up there too. She fine and crazy. Listen, it, it works with the, works with the thing. Hold on. She fine. Right. Okay. So, if you are, see, you want someone that's like right. Where is it? Can fine, but the least amount of crazy you can. Like right there, right? This, this is death. This is where you die. You die right here. If these lines meet. We're right here. That's where you're dead. You're dead. Okay. No. Can I have that back? No. Have a seat. Oh, have a seat. Wait a minute. Hold on. Because you're blowing my theory. You're blowing my theory. Because, see, you're trying to give... Oh, wait a minute. You're trying to give him an out. Hold on. You're trying to give him an out. She fine. She... I don't care what he said about this here. She crazy and she fine. What do you do? This is his show. You still want to get with her? So you want to you want to have sex with her? Oh, wait, wait a minute. You 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 want to have sex with her, even though she fine and crazy. Yeah, she crazy. You still want to have sex with her? Hold on, guys. Wait a minute. Yeah, she crazy. You you just you don't want to have nothing to do with her. She crazy. Ten crazy. But she's but she's fine as hell. She's a ten, and she's fine. No. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Wait a minute, Miss Clark. Shannon, you had your hand up. We'll get back to it. Talia, go ahead. Okay, um, why is it socially acceptable for a woman to be crazy, but if a man's crazy, then it's just look at like he's bipolar or like he's like, like me like me personally, I would want to date like yeah, I would want to date like a guy who was like crazy, but like for like my brother, they like date like crazy girls who just like oh like the sex is better or whatever the case is. So like why is that so? Well, 
well, you know what? I, well, we, can, we can answer that. We live, we live in a society that's, we live in a society that's sexist. Okay. And then if you ask a lot of guys, um, you know, they will tell you. I had a student even tell me this last semester, Professor Golden, I got to get with her even though she might kill me. And I was trying to reason with him. And he said, he said look, she fine. I'm going to get with her first. I'll worry about the repercussions later. I said, don't you worry that she might, if you go to sleep, she might, no, she might slay, slay something. Yeah, for herself, as a souvenir. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to go there, fellas. But you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want you to think that you might, you, you might be dealing with somebody like that. Hold, hold on, Darren. Miss Clark had her hand up. Well, it's been a little bit past the time, but I just was commenting on, I think you mentioned it earlier, how if a guy's attractive and if he cat calls you, mm -hmm. you would be more open to giving him your number. I'm just confused on what we're dictating as cat calling because if... It could be anything, Miss Clark. That's not. Yeah, that's that's. I'm glad you're honest. That's, that's true. Go ahead, Emma. I, I got a rebuttal for here's how it's all right for men to date crazy women, but how often do you hear a woman saying, oh, I just wanted to fix it, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, they always want to, they always want us to all, they're all Okay. Okay. Fix her up for Are you saying Miss Robinson has a question? Her point that she just made. Go ahead. Go ahead, Miss Robinson. Um, in response to the like crazy girlfriend versus crazy boyfriend, uh -huh. it's like a set that um childish Gambino. Yeah. yeah. He's he's a comedian and he does a set where he talks about how men have these crazy ex girlfriend stories and he's like, but you want to know why women don't have crazy ex boyfriend stories? Because they're dead. Right. Or in jail. <laughs> yeah. So that's why it's like not as acceptable. Well. Right. Well, like I said, if, if we think about, yeah, you, you, you mentioned, no, you mentioned, Miss Robinson, crazy, um, and I think I shared this with you guys with my teammate, hold on, wait a minute, with my former, t my ex-teammate, where he is no longer with us because his, his ex stabbed him in the street. Mm -hmm. Did they have no, it wasn't no Jody Arias. This was back in the 90s. This is back in the 90s. Okay. Ms. Clark. Right. Like, like when guys are talking about a crazy girl, they're meaning it in a completely different right. light than when a girl is talking about a crazy guy. Well, she, 
Yeah. We're back. Was she, was, she to, was she told him that if, yeah, she told him that if I can't have you, nobody else will. Before she stabbed him. And she stabbed him here. Okay. So that's um, something um, that's kind of hard to deal with. Next one. Okay. And so we talk about this whole thing, and this is kind of our chapters dealing with um, um, feminist gender exclusive. Many people who are feminists have the contention that transgender people don't have a place in the feminist tent. When this goes back to this, this um, thing that you mentioned, David, about how this perception of feminism is perceived through the lenses of the media, okay? Yeah. Somebody sneeze, bless you twice. Okay. Yeah. Miss Clark? Um, now, going into this, I think, especially with how the media portrays feminism, there's multiple types. There's like white feminism, where a lot mm -hmm. of like celebrities will only yeah. try or include things that bring up white women mm -hmm. versus being in, an intersectional feminist, which is much more inclusive. Right. Yep. And I don't know if the term intersectional applies to people of different genders, but I think it should, just mm -hmm. because yeah. it's more of an umbrella term versus well, like white feminism. Well, you, if you think about it, and just using that term, if you look at, um, if I, what if I said this, that the only people that get raped in reference to women are white women? I know it's not true, okay. but through the lenses of the media. See? There's a, um, I got an email from um, a professor at Michigan State University that deals with um, that topic alone, how black women and Latin sisters are, are basically left out of the conversation. Let's take this a step further, going back a few slides. Does anybody know what the Violence Against Women Act is? It was just signed in 2013. And it was a, a, a heated debate in reference to that law being passed because there were a lot of members of Congress that did not want to sign that law. So of course I went and checked to see who voted no against it. But I found out one of the reasons why they were voting against it, it was because it included farm workers and women on reservations. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because if it's a violence against women, act, last I checked, there are women that are on reservations that are raped. Last I checked, there are farm workers that are raped. What about military? It covers everything. It covers everything. Those were the two that were added, Margie, that a lot of the Congress people, some of them women, that voted no against it. See, the original did not include the women that worked on the farms, and the women on the reservations. But once they included those other entities, those people who were signed the first legislation, voted for it, turned around and voted against it. Because it added, it protected the women on the reservations. Yes, Dave? How did it go about expressly excluding those groups beforehand? Because it goes back to what we were just talking about earlier, how some people view this particular issue as inclusive only to this particular ethnic or gender, different on different <laughs> situations. So you have a lot of people that just view certain things based on this group is the only group that's victimized. And this is the narrative that is pushed through print media as well as electronic media whether it be on a computer or over the air television. And that's the sad thing. You know, I always I have a saying that if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Okay? And that's a lot of people go through this because their voices are not at the table. If you go back and look at broadcast television 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 
in the 1950s, black and white television. What don't you see? You see all men who are white males doing the news. That's a problem. That's a problem. So when you have only this particular group that's being represented, or when you guys are sitting around tables at these meetings, so we're going to talk about this particular topic on television, there's only opinions of these four individuals. Nobody else is included. Your opinions don't count. It's only the opinions of these. And they determine how many minutes are going to be spent on a particular story. And see, for every subject on television, every one, they have a um, list of people they call. And so when they're talking about issues dealing with women, notice who they have on television. When they talk about issues concerning police misconduct, notice who they have on television. When they have issues regarding the economy, notice who they call. Specific people for specific topics. Isn't that, that how it should go? Hmm? Isn't that how it should go? No, because you, you have an opinion on misconduct of police, don't you? Shouldn't you be at the table? Shouldn't your opinion count? That's right. Should your opinion count? I got an opinion on issues dealing with certain topics. I should be on television. My opinion matters. It's like yours. You're not relevant. I'm, I'm not relevant because I'm not, I'm not, yeah, and you're not relevant because you're not going to follow the editorial perspective of that network. A lot of lies, a lot of falsehoods, or things that are left out. See, the most important stories is the stories that's not told. See, you got a story, but then there's another story that caused this to happen, or sometimes in the wake of that. I got to give Mr. Partier. Go ahead, Mr. Partier. They sure do. They sure. They sure do. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to go over. Now we're going to do this again. On Tuesday, we're going to be dealing with that topic right there, because if people are having sex intimately, we can have peace, because these world leaders who go to the United Nations and they have in that room where they have the name plates of the different countries and I've been in that room where they've had these meetings, they freaks too. Okay, so they, how they freaks? You think they, they don't have sex? What I'm saying, let me finish. Let me finish. I was asking a question. Look, if, if people are having sex, they're not thinking about killing other people. Sure, yeah. There you go. Yes. How can you think about killing somebody else when you want to get your freak on? And guys, too, Shannon. Don't make it exclusive. Okay, look, guys. Um, hold on, guys. Make sure that you, you stay safe out there. Be safe out there. The cops have been out pretty heavy the last couple of days. They've been really heavy, extremely. OK, so be careful out there. Talk to the older people, because you're trying to get to where they at. Do something with the younger people, because they're looking up at you. If you're going to suck down the suds, suck down the sauce, smoke the reefers, make sure you don't grip the wheel. And the next time we argue with each other and we fuss at each other, Take care of yourself and peace to you. Uh -huh.